What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to look into the basics of MySQL with Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so in order to work with MySQL in Python, you need to have a MySQL server, a database running on your system, or you can also say running remotely, uh, but you need to have a MySQL server that you can work with. So what you can do is you can go to dev.mysql.com slash download slash MySQL, and you can download the MySQL community server, which I, I am using on my system. You can also download XAMPP if you want to, so X-A-M-P-P, and you can just boot up the MySQL server there and connect to it if you want to. It doesn't really matter how you get MySQL onto your system, you need to get MySQL onto your system. You need to get some sort of MySQL database. You can also host it remotely. You can also get one online, but you need to have a MySQL database. Um, I'm not a fan of guiding you through the installation process of things, as you probably already know, because I think that's not the most complicated part. So you basically just download the installer and fo uh, follow the instruction. And if you have some difficulties, you just Google your way out of them. Uh, basically, you have this installer, you run it, you create your database, you need to uh, specify that you want it as a Windows service if you want it as a Windows service. And you can also specify a username and a password. So you want to have a password and a username that you can connect to uh, using those credentials. Uh, for example, root and admin or in my case, neural nine with a password neural nine since it's locally it doesn't really matter. We're just going to use it for that tutorial. One thing that I want to show you is that if for some reason you cannot start it through the command line because I had this issue, uh, you can just go to, um, I should explain the shortcut here, you can just press the Windows key and R and you can open up services.msc and this is how you get to services and if you cannot boot it up through the command line and if it's not already booted up, you can just go down here to MySQL80 right click and start and then it's going to be booted up and we're going to be able to connect to it. So in this case, I needed to do it. I didn't even expect to have to do it because I thought it was already running, uh, but I had to start it now. And the next step is to now go to Python and start with the coding. So you need to have a MySQL database and then you can connect to it. But before you can connect to it, you need to have the MySQL connector module. So you need to open up your command line and you need to install a lot of people think that you need to say pip install MySQL, but that's not true. You need to say pip install MySQL connector Python, like that, mysql-connector-python. Uh, you install that. I have already installed that. And then what you import is you say import mysql.connector, like that. This is what you do. So in order to connect to the database, you of course need to know where it is. If it's remote, you need to get the IP address or the domain name. If it's locally, you just have to say localhost. So you say connection or con equals mysql.connector.connect. And here we specify a bunch of parameters. For example, the host of the database is going to be localhost, which is here on this computer. If you have a website where you're hosting this, then just provide the link. Uh, in this host variable here, then the user that you want to connect with, this is the user that has the privileges, you can pick root if you have a root user, and uh, you can pick your own username that you set up uh, during the tutorial or not tutorial during the installation process. And then you also specify a password neural nine. And um, later on, we also have to specify a database, but not for now, because we don't have one yet. So this is the connection, we can actually go ahead and see if it works. So we can just print connection and see if we are actually able to connect. We get a connection object. Let's see if we would get one if I use a different username, for example, hello, or if it would crash on us. No, it says okay, access denied for user hello at localhost. So it seems to work with neural nine and does not seem to work with another username. So the connection actually works. Um, so this is what you need to do. If for some reason your user doesn't work, try with root and a blank password or root root or admin admin, whatever. Just try some combinations. Most of the time it will work, uh, work with root and no password. Um, now what we need to do here in order to execute statements 
on the database is we need a so-called cursor. This is what we're actually going to use in order to execute statements. So we're going to create a cursor and we're doing that by saying cursor equals connection dot cursor, which is a function. And this function returns a cursor object. And this cursor object now can just execute SQL statements. So for example, let's go ahead and create a new database. We're going to say cursor dot execute and I'm not going to give you an SQL tutorial here. So you should know what SQL create and drop database and select from and uh, insert into and um, alter table does. I'm not going to explain basic SQL syntax to you. I'm just showing you how to use it in Python, but I can explain a little bit along the way because it's not too complicated. Basically we're creating a database, create database if not exists. Um, and we're going to call it neural base, for example, um, or let's call it tutorial base and create database. If not exists tutorial base, this is going to create that. And in order to see if it works or not, um, we're actually just going to run this. And now we're going to add here in the connection database equals tutorial base because we're not going to be able to select or insert if we don't have um, a database specified. And as you can see, it works. If I change this to something else here, it is probably going to say, yeah, there is no database like that. So it only works because that database actually exists. So this worked. Um, now what we can do with that database is we can create some tables so we can say, okay, cursor dot execute, create table, if not exists. And I don't know, we can say person, for example, and we can do the same thing with thing. So we're going to have persons owning things and person will be ID integer primary key and name is just going to be a varchar of 64. By the way, let me just see one more time if I'm blocking anything here. We'll just move this up here. There you go. Um, so we're going to have ID and primary key name varchar 64. And we're going to have the same thing actually for the thing. So a thing can have an ID, which is going to be an integer. It's also the primary key of the table. And this is a varchar of length 64 as well. There you go. So those are uh, those are the tables. Maybe we want to have one more table. And for this, we're going to use a multi line string because it's just better if you have uh, large statements to just use a multi line string. So three quotation marks here in the beginning and in the end. And then we say create table if not exists owns. This is the ownership table. And then we can say, okay, the person integer and the thing integer. And we can say foreign key person references person ID and foreign key thing references thing ID. There you go. And we close that. So now we have three tables. We can see that we have those tables by just saying cursor dot execute show tables. And we can say for table in cursor, the information is going to be in the cursor itself, we're going to just print the table. So we can run this and you can see we have owns person and thing. So it worked. Now, we can use those tables now to insert some basic data, some insert statements, and then we can also select those and we can transform them into Python objects and store Python objects into the database, for example. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say cursor dot execute and we're going to do a multi line string here again, insert into person ID name values and we're going to insert ID one is going to be Alice use single quotation marks always in SQL two is going to be Bob and three is going to be Charlie. There you go. 
and we're going to use the same thing here for the things. So insert into things ID name. One is going to be a ball. Or actually, let's go with ABC again. So it's going to be an apple. This is going to be a box. And this is going to be a computer, for example. And now we have the ownerships as well. So we can get all this here. And we say insert into owns person oops person thing values and here we just have the numbers let's say person two owns the object one person two also owns the object three and person one owns the object two for example now we have some ownership here um yeah, basically, that is what we can do. We can now go ahead and just execute that. Uh, we have a problem tutorial base things does not exist. Uh, did I call it think? Okay, then it's thing. Where did I say things? Insert into things. There you go. So now it works, the data should be inside of the tables. And now what we can do, this is maybe the more interesting part for Python is we can now query statements, we can get certain persons out of the database and store them in actual Python objects. And for this, let's say just hypothetically, we have a class person here. And this person has a constructor in it with a self keyword ID and name and the default values here are none. Don't expect this to be professional object oriented programming. I'm just doing something here uh, to show you how you could do it. So self ID equals ID self dot name equals name. And then we could have a function like print info. And we could just print ID and name just a basic informational function. And what we can now do is we can just say, okay, I want to have from the result that I get. So maybe we should look into that first before we create that class. Let's say we have um, results, or actually, we should execute it before let's say we have cursor execute, uh, select everything from person. And then we can say result equals cursor dot dot fetch all. So we get all the results. And then we can say, okay, for row in result, print row. And we can see that we here have one Alice two Bob three Charlie. So we have all these. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, we have all these um, tuples, in this case, because we only have two values. And what we now do is or what we now want to do is we want to get such a result set and turn this into a Python object. So we can say, for example, something like def from result. And we can get result here, for example, um, or not result, but row. And we can say, okay, self dot ID equals row zero, and self dot name equals row one. This is what we can do, for example, um, and we can also do it the other way around, right, right, we can do that, uh, we can store a person into the database, we can say, okay, to database, self, we want to have a cursor here, that we pass to that function, we basically just say cursor execute, uh, insert into person ID name values, and now we can just use self dot ID and self dot name, but I'm going to show you in a second why that is a terrible idea to do it like that. This is uh, a very terrible idea to do it like that. And you're going to learn something very interesting in this video. So never do it like that. I'm just showing you how you could do it, but you should never do it like that. And I'm going to explain to you why in a second. Uh, but this is something that you could do, right? So you have this person class here, you have a select statement, let's just uh, get that and bring it down here. And let's say we say we have, I don't know, uh, let's go with for row in result, we say p equals person and we have default values of none. And then we say p dot from result row. 
and we say p.printinfo. Let's see if this works. There you go. You can see that we got this output from a Python object. And now what we can do is we can also say, okay, p1 equals a person. This person is going to have the ID 8 and it's going to have the name Mike. And we can just say p two database. There you go. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, cursor. We need to pass a cursor. There you go. And if I run this now again, you can see that, no, you cannot see that. Why can you not see that? Insert into person ID name values. Uh, let me just see what happens if I remove that. Do I have to do it before? I don't think so, right? Let's see. I think I have a bug here because it's not inserting into person. It should say cursor dot execute and insert person into that. But for some reason, it is not showing all the persons. It's not showing Mike. So I'm going to fix that and I'm going to get back to you in a second. All right, I found my mistake. Uh, it's a pretty stupid mistake. It's that I don't commit my changes. So I need to go with connection dot commit in order to actually um, commit the changes to the database. So I'm inserting, I'm creating, I'm doing all that. But in the end, I'm not uh, committing all the things that I'm doing. So I need to add a connection dot commit in the end. And now if I run this again, uh, of course, you will see, first of all, duplicate entry. So we need to comment out all of that because we already have inserted that. Uh, same thing goes for the two database statements. So we're going to comment that out and that out as well. So if I now run this, you can see Mike is part of the database. So it seems to work. We can get from the database into Python objects. We can get from Python objects into the database. But now I'm going to show you why the way that we did this particular thing here is uh, really not good at all. Now, in this case, we're doing everything in the code. So maybe you could say it's safe. But let's say you are actually allowing the user to input the ID and the name for that person. So let's say uh, you want to create a new person, you say to the user, okay, choose the ID for the new person, choose the name for the new person, what would you like to have? And they choose the name that say they say, uh, Anna, and they say ID 23. Uh, if that is the case, no problem. But if the user can influence that they can influence this string here. And this uh, is very much vulnerable to an SQL injection, which we really don't want to happen in this case. So first of all, the only way to really work around that is to sanitize properly or to use prepared statements. We're not going to talk about this too much. But this is a horrible idea. And I'm going to show you why. Let's say we don't have p1 equals person. Uh, eight Mike, but let's say we have p1 equals something else. So let's say uh, p1 equals person ID 15, for example, and the string is not Mike, but the string is actually Mike. But then we add a single quotation mark, closing parentheses, semicolon, drop database, tutorial base, semicolon comment in SQL. Wow, what is that? That is an SQL injection. So to database, there you go, run this and see what happens. Uh, we have a problem with the cursor. See what happens when we run that. Bam, use multi equals true when executing multiple statements. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Uh, the problem is that if I now comment that out and I run the whole thing, it says unknown database tutorial base. Guess why? Because the database does not exist anymore. So of course, um, I would have to delete it here. I would have to, oh, sorry, I would have to connect to the database again. I would have to create it first. Uh, then I would have to go with database equals tutorial base again. I would have to run this again. And then you would see that I don't have any entries because this little 
thing here destroyed the whole database. Because what I did here is think about it. Uh, we have the string up here. I'm going to just copy this uh, whole string here. This is the string that we're executing on the database. So I'm going to add it as a comment here. This is a string insert into person ID name values. And here we have the two things that we control. And what we entered here is 15. And what we entered here, this is what we have if we don't enter anything. This is what it looks like. And what we entered here is Mike. We closed the quotation mark. So we added a third quotation mark here, closed the parentheses, added a semicolon, as you can see here. And then we say drop database tutorial base. This is an SQL statement. Then we just use a comment to get rid of all of that here so that it doesn't mess up the code. This is how you do an SQL injection. This is not good. You don't want to have this in your program. You don't want to have this vulnerability. So you never want to do it like that. No matter how cool you think uh, the feature is that you're implementing, never do it like that, that you just add some strings to your statements. Always use prepared statements or sanitizing. Uh, the best thing is always use prepared statements. So otherwise you're going to massively mess up your system. But those are the basics for MySQL in Python. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.